Hello and welcome to this channel. In this episode, I will show you how we can implement workspace identity in Microsoft Fabric to securely bring your data from Azure Data Lake Storage to Fabric via shortcuts and data pipeline. Before we go into the demonstration, let's understand the meaning and benefit of Fabric workspace identity. In Microsoft Fabric, Workspace Identity is an automatically managed service principle associated with the Fabric Workspace. It enables secure access to resources like Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 through Microsoft Entra authentication without the need for a manual credential management. Among several benefits, it reduces the risk of credential leaks or downtime. It eliminates the need for keys, secrets, or certificates for authentication. The workspace identity is automatically assigned the contributor role within the workspace and the identity is tied to the workspace lifecycle, which means that when the workspace is deleted, the workspace identity is immediately deleted also. Workspace identity is useful for scenarios involving trusted workspace access, one leg shortcuts, and data pipelines. So let's go into the practical side of things. This is app. PowerBI.com. So the first thing we're going to do is to create our Fabric workspace and the workspace identity, and then we're going to move to the Azure portal. We're going to create a brand new Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 storage account. We're going to create containers and load our sample data into the respective containers. And then we're going to grant storage block data contribution permission on the storage account we want to connect to using the workspace name as the service principle. And then we're going to come back to the Fabric portal and then use the identity for authentication on the Fabric item like the data pipeline and the wallet shortcuts in the Synapse Lake hours. So let's go through all of this. Now I'm going to click on the workspaces on the left hand side and click on new workspace. And I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this one my demo workspace. And this is unique and available for me to use. And then at the bottom, I'm going to click on apply. And then in a matter of seconds, the workspace is now provisioned. Now I'm going to click on workspace settings. And then we have the workspace identity below the one leg. Click on that. And then we have the option to create the workspace identity to use as an authentication method. So click on the plus sign workspace identity and in a matter of seconds all of this should be fully provisioned and we're going to see the details like the id the role and so on and so forth so we can see we have the id that is associated with this workspace identity and then we can see this automatically inherits the workspace contributor as i mentioned and the status is active and then we have the authorized users like the person that created this workspace and then we have the my demo workspace so we have this can edit members, can use identity permission levels. That is cool. Now I'm going to come to the portal.azure.com and I'm going to create the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 storage account. So I'm going to click on storage accounts and then click on create a brand new storage account. And then under the basics, I'm going to use my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. And I'm going to choose this RCG Cornerstone Analytics to store this service. And then for the storage account name, I'm going to use this, my demo identity, which is unique. And this is globally available. And I'm going to maintain this UK South region. And I'm going to click on the next. Now, since we want to create the hierarchical namespace the Azure Data Lake Gen 2. I'm going to toggle on this enable hierarchical namespace and that's all I need to do. Click on the review plus create and we can see this being validated and I can click on create and this is going to be submitted for deployment and in about three minutes or thereabout the storage account should be fully provisioned and we can create our workspaces we can load our data and then we can grant the necessary permissions. There we go. Your deployment is complete. So I'm going to click on go to resource and then we have the my demo identity storage account created. Now I want to click on containers. We want to create two containers. Now for our sample data, I've got two CSV files, the orders and the customer. So I'm going to create a separate containers for these two files. Of course, we can use the same container, but I just want to put them in a separate container. So I'm going to click on container and I'm going to call this one orders and click on create. And then I'm going to create the second call customer. 
and then click on create at the bottom now in the customer's container i'm going to go right into there and then click on the upload we have this option to bring our data quickly so i'm going to click on browse and bring my data so you can see i've got this customer.csv and i'm going to click on upload and we have the data in the container so i can click on the name of the file click on the edit and at the bottom i'm going to click on preview and then we can see the content of the customer.csv we've got three columns the customer id customer name and the gender that's sorted now i'm going to go back and then go to the orders container i can click on the upload i can browse and then i've got my orders.csv click on upload and you can see the data click on it click on edit at the bottom click on preview and then we have the order id order date delivery date product and the sales so we have the two data in the respective container so i'm going to quickly go back home and then i can click on the my demo identity and they want to grant the necessary permission so to grant the permission i'm going to click on the access control the iam and then we're going to create a role assignment so add a role assignment and i'm going to search for storage blob data contributor which allows us to read right delete access to azure story blob containers and data so click on that and at the bottom i'm going to click on next and then we're going to provide the assigned access to either user group or service principal so i'm going to maintain this as a service principal and then i can select the members and now don't forget the name of the workspace is my demo workspace and that's going to be what we're going to set for so i'm going to type in my demo and there we go so i can see that here so i can click on it and then we can see the selected members and then click on select and then we can see this is now selected you can see the object id and the type is up and then click on the review plus assign and then we can see the scope the subscription and some of other details click on review plus assign and in a matter of seconds we have the role assignment and then i can click on the role assignment just to verify for the sake of argument we have that registered in this role assignment tab that's sorted now i'm going to come back to the app.power bi and then we're going to provision our synapse with lake house so i'm going to search for lake house and click on that and i'm going to call this one sales data you can use whatever name click on create and in a matter of seconds or maybe one minute we have the sales data lake house created now we're going to go ahead and bring the customer data into this file environment of the lake house through shortcuts so i'm going to click on this ellipsis for the files click on that and then click on the new shortcuts and then we have this external sources and then we have the internet that is the microsoft one lake now i've done videos on amazon s3 i've got a video on the google cloud storage i've got a video even on this so we can always check them out so i'm not going to click back on the azure data lake storage and tool and then we're going to provide the connection now if you've done this before you can reuse the existing connection but in this case i do not have any connection so i want to create a brand new connection so click on this and then we're going to provide the url that points to our storage account and we're going to also provide the connection details which include the connection name and the big one which is the authentication card and this is we're going to be talking more about the workspace identity so for this I'm going to come here and then I want to quickly set for the endpoint and I can see that here and I'm going to scroll down and I want to look for the primary endpoint that is the data lake storage and this must contain the name of your storage account dot the data file system dot call dot windows dot net so copy this to the clipboard I'm going to come back here and I'm going to paste into this URL box and then I'm going to give this a nice name I'm going to call this one ADLS connection you can use whatever name as the connection name and then for the authentication kind i'm going to use the workspace identity you can see we have quite a lot of options like the account key the organization account which is associated with the entry id we have the shared access signature which is even a little bit more secure and then we have the service principal but we want to use the workspace identity so click on that and then we don't have any other thing to provide just click on next now as soon as you see this intermediate step this automatically tells you that the authentication is working properly otherwise you would have seen error you don't have probably gotten to this level so we can see that everything is looking good now i can double click on the customers 
I can see the customers.csv and I can click on these and then we have the next option at the bottom and then we can see the shortcut name, the source status as yet to create. We can action by deleting or by editing and I'm going to just click on create. And there we go, we have the customer data. I can double click and then we can see the data. I can click on this, I can move to table and I can even use the notebook to query this data. It's absolutely fine. So I can click on this and then just move. But this is how we can use the workspace identity to bring our data into the lake house via the shortcut. Now I'm going to quickly go back and I'm going to use the data pipeline. So click on this and then I'm going to just maintain this name or let me just call this one orders. We want to bring the orders data click on the create and then we can use the copy data into lake house we can use this user interface but i'm going to cancel this and build it by myself so i want to use the pipeline activity and then i can search for the copy data and it's going to be in the canvas automatically and then we can give this a name i'm going to say um, orders table or data and then come to the source and source we're going to choose the same connection we use for the shortcut so click on this and then we can see the connection here which is the adls gen 2 connection and click on that and then we have the refresh we can even for the sake of argument test the connection to be sure that we have the connection working as it should amazing so connection successful and then for the file path type we can use the file path of course, if I bring in more data, but I, what I want, I can use this wildcard file path. But since we've got a single file, I'm just going to provide the file path. Click on the browse functionality, and then we're going to provide the name of the container and the name of the file. So this is the orders, and then you can see the orders.csv file. Click on that, and then click on OK. And then we can see we have the name of the container. We do not have any directory, and then we have the name of the file. That's cool. Now, we have this recursively now this doesn't matter as much and then for this i can click on this and then i'm going to choose the delimited text because our file format is a comma separated value and then i can click on this preview data just to see the content of the orders.csv so we can see this is actually showing us at least the top 10 records in our data which is brilliant now we want to go to the destination and then i'm going to choose the connection now i want to land this data in the sales data lake house so we'll click on this and then we're going to use the root folder we're going to create this as a delta table so i'm going to maintain this table root folder and then for the name of the table you can see i don't have any table there's an option to auto create the table i'm going to call this one orders and that's what I need to do. Click on create and I can click on the validate to check for any potential errors. No errors. Click on the close and click on the run functionality. And it's going to prompt me to save and then run the data pipeline. So click on save and run. And there we go. Let's just see in a matter of maybe three minutes or thereabouts, this should give us a successful integration amazing so this succeeded now i can go back to the workspace and the lake house rather i can click on this refresh functionality and then we have the orders table so i can right click and then i can do some things like you know check the properties rename and so on and so forth i can click on this i can see you know the columns and then i can even interact further so this is how we can use the workspace identity in microsoft fabric to bring our data from the azure data lake storage engine too i trust you enjoyed this video if you do like comment share and follow me for more videos thank you for watching bye for now